can the human brain handle living on Mars? The research continues on the quest to send humans beyond the moon. Check out this NASA project where a group of six volunteers lived inside a small dome on top of a volcano in Alaska for eight months pretending to be on Mars. Be there when they emerge on the last day. It's crazy that you guys have been living in this dome for eight months, six of you in here. Are you calling me crazy? Yeah. <laughs> but that's actually why these six crew members were chosen for this special mission, to see if they would go crazy. It definitely has that potential. <laughs> I was one of the first civilians they saw in months. This is pretty tiny. That's because they were stuck living inside this small dome, pretending to be on Mars. Except Mars is the top of this dormant volcano in Hawaii. Some say this is the most Martian-like environment we have here on Earth. It's isolated, it's desolate, it's rocky, it's cold. I mean, I truly feel like I'm on another planet. They lived here because NASA needs to figure out a major problem, if the mind can handle a trip to deep space. These missions are incredible undertakings. They're unprecedented in terms of distance, mm -hmm. duration, and confinement. We don't know how it's truly gonna impact our brains. Yes, exactly. We really want to be able to quantify this risk. And that's where the High Seas mission comes in. The goal of this mission is to look at crew cohesion and performance. We wanna see how we can uh, select people and then support them so they can do long duration space missions without going crazy. Yeah, without basically. Going. There have been similar experiments, but high seas is one of the longest. <laughs> and the first to focus solely on a co-ed mission to Mars. So we had to wear these sociometers while we were awake and they would like measure our interaction. So those are the things that would measure how close you are to some of your other crew members. Yeah. See who likes with each other, who doesn't yeah. like each other. How loud your voice is when you're talking to someone. Right, so whether right, right. you're whispering or possibly having a heated discussion. That never happened. No. Right. A Mars mission could last over a year. So researchers studied how the high seas crew behaved during this extended period of time in this very confined space. Is there any place in this habitat where you have any privacy at all? Visual privacy, you can go yeah, into your room and close privacy. the door, but there's absolutely no sound privacy at all. But it's not just how the crews get along. <laughs> the data we're getting out is giving NASA engineers information about how much water crews use, how much food they eat, what kinds of food they eat, how much energy they use, how much space they need. This is the largest room in the hab. The crew members selected for this mission are as astronaut-like as possible, chosen for their education and temperament. But even they had a hard time. I had to try different things. I had to like, okay, well maybe if I just go in my room and like stay away from people for a while, and that doesn't work. But if we want to make it to another planet, we need to figure out how to deal with these feelings of anxiety, depression, even boredom. That's we played right. board games about five nights a week. Did you guys get bored a lot so you needed the <laughs> board games? Well, yeah, <laughs> movies and TV shows and board games were about the only social activities we had. And NASA psychologists say that a very important part of keeping us happy is food. So this is where you guys did all your cooking. Yes. Yeah. But this is not your typical cooking. I mean, you guys were dealing with freeze-dried food here. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing really fresh. No. You can always find someone making something in here, so it's kind of the most social room. Unlike closer space missions, Earth is so far you can't even see it from Mars. So the crew here didn't have much of a view either. I want to see where you guys slept. Okay. These are, this is Sophie and I's rooms. Oh wow, it's pretty compact in there. Pretty compact. No windows. No. <laughs> you got to block from the space radiation, right? Right, exactly, yeah. The power and water on Mars is also limited. So they could only take one six minute shower per week. We kind of track everyone's usage of the shower. There's also a 20 minute communication delay to and from Earth. What about contact with the outside world? We had, you know, some uh, delayed communication. Family and friends could communicate with us. So I think that was really important to a lot of the crew members. Stepping into the legs. And whenever they went outside to simulate spacewalks, they actually wore a spacesuit. Having gone through this experience, would you still go to Mars? Absolutely. Would you go to Mars? Yesterday. And even though they didn't really go to Mars, they survived an extreme test. This moment is, is pretty awesome to, to be able to come out and walk around. And their struggles may bring us one step closer to getting there.